It is exactly midnight in Tokyo right now. It's still a little busy considering that it's before last train, but you'll be amazed at how quickly this city empties out. And tonight, we're gonna walk clear across the city of Tokyo. Now our first step is to get out of the area of Shibuya, but right out of the gate, we have two problems, struggles with today's walk. Number one is it is the peak of summer right now. Even now at night, it is currently 30 degrees, not to mention the humidity. And during the day, it was closer to 37, 38. And number two is because it's the peak of summer, the sun rises incredibly early, like 4, 4.30 a.m. So it doesn't give me a lot of time to get across the city. A straight line walk across Tokyo is only about two to three hours, but with all there is to see and explore in Tokyo, I have zero intention of doing this as a straight line walk. We're gonna have some fun tonight. One of the things I love about this city is as soon as you get into the back streets, everything just quiets right out and it's like you have the city to yourself. I always recommend that when people come to Japan that they should go out and explore late at night. A lot of people, including myself, have this original image of Tokyo being like New York, a city that never sleeps, but Tokyo sleeps and when it sleeps, it sleeps hard. Last train is typically somewhere between midnight and 1 a.m. and then after that, Everything just empties right out, except for this one loud bike right here. It's just... That guy, he doesn't sleep. Or that car. Or that taxi. Okay, there's still people, but it gets really quiet. There's a lot of construction in Tokyo at night. Also, I've made it out to the area of Ropongi in probably record time. A lot of the taxis bringing people home from the nightclubs. I'm trying to get as far past Tokyo Tower as quickly as possible to what I consider to be the really fun side of Tokyo while it's still dark. So I've, I've been keeping a good pace. I think we're doing okay so far. Roppongi is definitely one of those areas that kind of always keeps going. I don't come out here that often, but whenever I do, I get to find cool shop names like John Lemon. I spoke previously, I'll link it here, about how different areas of Tokyo are broken down by purpose. Entire areas just for bookstores, entire areas for anime and electronics. This area is known for its nightlife, clubs, bars, all of that. Then once again, as soon as you get out of the main area of Roppongi, things quiet right down. Got Tokyo Tower right there. It's past one o'clock in the morning, so it's not lit up right now. I actually think they turn it off around midnight, but now that the borders are open, so many people have been coming in. Right on the other side, there's a photo spot that lines up even two, three, four o'clock in the morning just so people can get photos with Tokyo Tower. It is absolutely bonkers. A few years back during the height of the pandemic, I took the Shamisen girls out there to shoot a music video at something like three o'clock in the morning. It was actually freezing cold, but we got what to this day is one of my favorite music videos that we have ever made. This behind me here is Zoljoji Temple, one of the best views that you're gonna be able to get of Tokyo Tower. And it seems like they're setting up for some kind of event here. Since the borders open up though, I've gotten an influx of messages saying, hey dude, I'm in Japan. Is there any way we can meet up for a coffee? And I'm constantly filled with both gratitude and guilt because I can only reply to maybe 1% of those and the rest end up going ignored. I am so sorry for that. I do hold Patreon meetups every now and then, by the way. We just did one at my studio where we all got to enjoy the space, have a couple drinks, get to know each other. Plus we have the Discord and everything over there. But if you have sent me a message, know that I appreciate you and know that I feel terrible for not replying or not being able to reply. But we are making pretty good progress on our walk today. It is about two o'clock in the morning. We're already in my favorite part of Tokyo with all the tiny narrow back streets. This is where things get fun. so 
Oh, so much better. The temperature's gotten better. It's gone down to about 26 degrees, but we're still at about 87% humidity. And it takes it out of you after a while. I'm starting to have my doubts as to whether or not we're gonna be able to make it all the way across the city before the sun comes up, but I'm not quite ready to throw in the towel yet, so let's keep going. Into the area of Shimbashi. I've stopped off at one of my favorite rooftops here just because I love the view up here so much. I don't even know how many Tokyo rooftop videos I've done so far. If I, yeah, I'll just link an entire playlist. But if I hang out up here too long, we're not gonna make it anywhere. So let's keep going. Shimbashi is the perfect place for rooftop and backstreet adventures. The entire area is always lit up. It is filled with tiny, narrow streets everywhere the eye can see. I love this area. If you have an opportunity to find a hotel here and stay here, it's a great area to stay. They've still got some cheap hotels, which is amazing because another side effect of the borders opening up is almost all the cheap hotels have disappeared. During the pandemic, it was not hard for me to find a decent hotel for $30, $40 for a night, but now all the hotels prices have gone way, way up. So if you're gonna book, book in advance. You have the mix of the back streets and then you have these little hidden temples and shrines just tucked back here. Oh. Everything between here and the area of Asakusa, the whole zone, is it's just a playground. There's <laughs> so many hidden temples and shrines, and then you just go through this tunnel like this, and boom, there's a random chef walking down the back street. these little tunnels under the tracks here as well. Japan is really good at using the space under the tracks. Like, look at this, it's nearly three o'clock in the morning right now, so all of this is closed. But if you come out here at night, especially on like a Friday or a Saturday, this area is bustling and it's filled with amazing little restaurants. It's like a two minute walk down the street from Shimbashi Station in between Shimbashi and Ginza, which we're gonna I should be pulling up on right now. Now Ginza is filled with late night entertainment clubs also. Can you imagine trying to drive a Hummer through Tokyo? But there's also one more thing that Ginza is filled with that it's not really known for and that's these tiny narrow little back alleys in between the different areas. Like this one here. And some of the shops are even still open, but it's not just the tiny little alleys from Ginza basically all the way to Akihabara and Ueno. In these back alleys, you're gonna find a ton of little hidden shrines, and I love that so much. The entire area of Akihabara, where I have my studio, used to be a whole area of shrines, and now a lot of the shrines are either tucked behind buildings or even moved onto the rooftops. I'll, I'll show one right here. There's no shortage of these little hidden alleyways. Look at this. This is absolutely bonkers. And it's not something you think from what is actually one of Tokyo's richest district. If it still holds, I don't know if it does. At one point, the land at the Ginza crossing, like the, the main crossing point, was actually valued to be the most expensive land on earth. I wonder if that still holds. Google check. He's ran through a red light. And a lot of these spots aren't even super, super hidden. Like this right here, this is the main street of Ginza. And I'd say 20 meters down here is another little hidden shrine. You can find it because it's marked with this. Like you come into this and you're like, I am most certainly in the wrong spot. And then, and then you're not, because it's right there. Despite the lack of Tori gates, it's an Inari shrine, just like the one in Kyoto, Fushimi Inari, hence the foxes. And people have even left little offerings here. Someone left a flower.
So we're only about an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes until sunrise, but I had to stop off at one more rooftop because this, this is probably one of my favorite views of Tokyo. And just down the road from Ginza is, oh, well, that's super dark, but that's Tokyo Station. Over on the other side is the Yaisa side, and then this is the Maranochi side, the side that's pitched to be fancy and beautiful. Just on the other side of this building here is the Imperial Palace, as well as almost the exact location where I got hit by a truck last year. Can you believe it's nearly been a year since I've been hit by a truck? Bit of an update, I am feeling moderately better. Flight training is going good. My solo is hopefully coming up soon. I've got the whole It's Up in the Air channel, and when I do my solo, that will be the official launch for that channel. I still can't play shamisen and may not be able to. I just don't have the strength to grip the bachi with my pinky finger, and there's no brace or anything that can be done for it. But that is okay because I work with Kiki and we run our online Shamisen school and we get to travel the world. We've already done two countries this year alone. So we're doing okay and we're getting closer and closer to our destination. There's also a little private parking space for a Times car share there. Interesting location, but those time car shares are amazing. I use those every single week and I can use it as much as I want and it still doesn't cost me as much as it would just cost me to park, just to park at my apartment building. Parking in Tokyo is, is something else. Garbage truck. One of the most fun walks that you can do in Tokyo is the section along the Yamanote line, especially everything from Ueno all the way down to Ginza, Shimbashi, everywhere that we just were. This whole section is just filled with restaurants and shops and all that underneath. There's capsule hotels like the nine hours here. There's no shortage of stuff to do. The entire area looks amazing. And again, tons and tons of hidden little alleys like this as well. It's a fun little space, but if I am not mistaken, <laughs> that sky there means that the sun is coming up. It is about four o'clock in the morning right now. Whenever I do live streams in the summer on my live stream channel, Tokyo Lens Explore, I tend to start them at around maybe 4, 4.30 in the morning because that's when the sun comes up. But our goal, our final destination for the day is just on the other side of this bridge. Yeah, look how bright the sky is getting. And I kind of feel like before I end everything, I'm gonna need to find myself a bath, a sento, because this was a very, because this was a very long walk. But the other side of this bridge here is the area of Akihabara. We made it. Okay, the sky has gotten pretty bright, but sunrise officially doesn't start for 20 more minutes, so I personally think we made it. Let me know what you think. I desperately, desperately need that bath. I'm pretty sure there's a Sento in your life. And this mark here means I found our bath. This is kind of a no camera sort of deal, so I hope that you have enjoyed the walk as much as I did. And we'll see you guys again real soon. I actually have a meeting in about two hours. That's right, I walked across the city and I have a meeting and I covered an entire wall in Pokemon cards. My studio wall was feeling a little lonely with just the Pokemon suit and so I plastered the entire wall with Pokemon cards. Can you guess how many hours that took? It's probably more than you're thinking. And that is it, the sun, the sun is up. That is the sun about to come over the buildings right there. That bath was also insanely crowded. I was not expecting that many people might try a different bath next time. Good to know there's one that close to the studio though. If you had a favorite part of today's adventure, let me know in the comments down below. After my meeting today, I'm shooting shamisen stuff, so it is a full day ahead. I hope your day is beautiful and you know I will see you again real soon.